What is up guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this knock bucket out. You can get this knock bucket out of my store or you're welcome to follow along in this video to create it yourself. I'll be supplying a pattern for you which you can easily drop into Glow 3D or Marvelous to almost copy the pattern which will be available on the site. Otherwise you can just try create it on your own. If you download this file of my site, it comes with the Marvelous, Blender, Texture, Photoshop and OBJ file as well as the app as well. Let's get into it. So if you're don't, if you not downloading the file from my site, you can just import an avatar from Flow 3 d or Marvelous. I'm just gonna be doing this one for now. Uh, if you do download the files, just using my avatar in the file, because uh, you'll see later on that I start a new one. To import the pattern, you need to make a rectangle and then import the graphic design onto that rectangle. You can then click on it and scale it before tracing it using the polygon tool. I wouldn't suggest making a dot at the bottom, I'd rather suggest doing a straight line and then using the curve tool uh, to curve it. You'll see later on during the tutorial where I correct myself, um, but just to save you guys some time, I suggest doing that. You can yet, then use the rectangle tool um, to create the next part of the hat and then go back to the polygon tool to do the rest. And um, we're gonna do half of the shape and then press Z on a keyboard click on the line and unfold pattern outline. We can then delete the rectangle in the background before repositioning in the 3D space. We're now gonna use the sewing tool to sew all our pieces together. To sew one piece to multiple, we can press shift and then click each line to sew them together. We're then gonna reposition in the 3D space again and superimpose the bottom onto our space. To ensure we have a successful simulation, we're going to set our particle distance to 5. Delete our avatars here and then simulate. Making sure we adjust the hat until it fits nicely. We can then use the sewing tool to sew the back of the hat together. We're then going to go into the fabrics panel, press open and select heavy canvas. I feel like this gives a better result when doing hats. I'm not going to select a color, this is just a base color for now. We can then go ahead and scale it a bit just so it fits on the head a little bit better. Now we're going to sew the last bit of the hat together. By using the sewing tool and pressing shift to sew both pieces together. We can then superimpose on the side before sewing the back together and then also making sure that we've set the particle distance to 5. You'll see there's a little bit of issues around the ear so we're just going to adjust that. I'll continue to scale until I'm happy with the results. We're then going to click around the bucket hat, right click and say offset as internal line. Set this about 10 millimeters. We can then click on that line that we've created and say cut and sew. To make the bucket hat lift a little bit, we're going to apply some pressure to the section that we've just cut and sewed. I'm now going to rename the main material before copy and pasting and creating an inner material. We can now copy the outside of the bucket and clone under. We can go into the 3D viewport area and click on the new pattern that we've created and say flip normals. This will allow us to see the texturing on those patterns. To create the holes in the bucket out, we're going to use the internal ellipse tool. Once we've set that up, we can cut a hole before copying and pasting it onto each pattern. We're now going to do the popping around the holes. You can use the popping tool to do this. Once you set up the pop, we can set it to one millimeter in width. I'm also going to create a separate fabric for this, which I'm going to apply to the popping. We can then copy the technique throughout until we've done all the holes. The next thing we're going to do is the top stitching. You can apply this wherever you want to, depending on the design you're going for. If you notice there's some overlapping on the stitching, we can delete the points on our pattern to avoid this. By clicking on the point and converting the point to a curve point, we can now add the button using the button tool. Once we've placed it, we can adjust the button properties. I'm going to set it to about 5mm in width and adjust it accordingly. If you're noticing that it doesn't look like it's sewed together properly, we can just preview it in thick. To avoid any skin touching, we can adjust it in the simulation. Now that we're happy with that, we can rotate it for our branding. We're then going to use the internal rectangle tool to create a sewing patch. And then right click, clone as pattern to create the patch. We can then right click on that pattern and use offset pattern outline. Create internal line and set it to about two millimeters before sewing it onto our bucket out. Simulating over in the 3D view space. We can now create a fabric for our branding. Once we're happy with that, we can add our top stitching. To ensure our export is done correctly, we can go into our UV editor and reset UV to 2D arrangement and make sure everything fits into the first tile. 
I'm now going to replace this avatar with my own avatar, just so that when you take it into Blender, we can adjust it however we want. For the branding, I'm going to change the fabric top to a nylon. I'm then going to add some more branding on the side by using the same technique I did in the front. Creating an internal rectangle, copying the pattern, creating an outline, and sewing it on before simulating it in a 3D face. Don't forget to set the particle distance to 5. We can then go back into the UV editor and place our pattern in the first tile. To export into Blender, we can bake our UV editor. We only need the normal and the diffuse, so we can select the location and export. We can then export our bucket hat as an OBJ. Make sure your settings look like this. We can then open up Blender and import our OBJ. Go into our 3D shader area and now select the fabrics that we're gonna work with. So to connect the patterns to the fabrics, we're going to right click, add image texture, and connect it to the base color. We can copy this, right click, add a normal map, and connect it to the normal. We're now going to link these to our texture file. Our base color goes to diffusion, and our normal goes to our normal file. We can then do this for all our materials. Some of them are going to be stitching, so just make sure you know which ones are which. The stitching I normally leave as is. I'm going to set my avatar material to the silver surfer look. Once I'm happy with that, I can join all my stitching materials so that I can adjust all the materials together. To add our branding, I'm going to open the diffuse PNG texture in Photoshop and drag and drop my logos in. Once I'm happy with that, I can export as a PSD. Open up Blender and relink the base color. And you should get something like this. If you made it this far, I really do appreciate it. Make sure to drop a like, comment, sub if you're new here, and don't forget to turn the notification bell on. If you need any help, make sure to drop into Discord. Um, always open to helping you guys out there. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.